hello fellow Jews, how do you do, I'd like to introduce, I raised you better than that, Jewish mom approved, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Hi, I'm Libby Walker and welcome to my show, Jewish Mom Approved. Within this show, you could find lifestyle tips, advice from your Jewish mother, and a guilt trip or two. To be clear, Cheryl Cohen is the person that we all can relate to. We all have a Cheryl Cohen in our lives. But was Cheryl Cohen made up? Or was Cheryl Cohen inspired? Mom, I'm sorry if you're listening, but you definitely took part in the creation of this character. Who said that? Moving on. Hi everybody, it's Cheryl, and I'm very upset today. So, you know, I'm a little bit on the exhausted side. Everybody was telling me, oh, Cheryl, you want the COVID vaccine? You have to stay up till three in the morning. You have to wake up early. I am a busy bee, okay? I am a Jewish mother. So I went on last night. I see, oh, 65 years old. Oh, if you have health conditions. You know, not one option had for concerned Jewish mother. I just don't understand. So, of course, I'm not eligible, and I don't know what to do, so I was thinking I should email the governor. You know what makes me so angry? You know, you go to the kosher for Passover section at most stores, and what do you see? You see matzah, you know, you see some snacks. When I go, I see unkosher for Passover, Matzah. I mean, why are you putting unkosher for Passover matzah? You know, chametz, right? We call it chametz in the kosher for Passover section. You know, some people, they don't understand. So what was I doing? I stood in the grocery store as defense and I told everyone, no, don't get it. It is not kosher la Pesach. And, you know, I think it was the big mitzvah of the week, but what are they supposed to do when I'm not there? So, you know, as I do every day, I was, you know, just checking my daughter's phone, her location, her text messages, making sure her social security is hidden in the private notes. Wouldn't want anybody to find that. And, you know, didn't find anything too crazy, but I did see that, you know, Jacob Bernstein sent my daughter a text message to meet at Chabad in five. I don't know about you, but I am jumping to conclusions. I mean, who is this Jacob? Where is he from? What synagogue does he go to? And did he go to a Jewish camp? I like the last name, but you know, just curious about these things. I'm also very curious, does he have dating profiles open? You know, what does he do in his spare time? Could he be a doctor, a lawyer? We like a boy with the future for my daughter, so I'm a little bit curious. Jewish mom approved. Welcome Aaron Ramey, the creator and founder of Meet Jew University, a Facebook group for Jewish university students to find love in the time of Corona. At the time of recording this, they are celebrating their one year anniversary. Congratulations and welcome Aaron. Thank you for having me on. Thank you. I appreciate it. Well, first of all, you know how much of a big fan I am of you. When we first started talking, it was also a year ago, and we were sending voice recordings back and forth. You were playing the Jewish mother. Could you do a little bit for us? Oh, my God, Libby, you're going to have me do it on the spot. I'm embarrassed. Oh, my God. What are you doing? Look, I saw you on the TikTok, and I was like, this is my long lost sister. I swear to God, it was crazy. It was totally crazy. And, you know, honestly, <laughs> from, those, Meshugana. from those first messages, I was like, this kid, this kid is special. Not only what he started is special, but, you know, he has it in him. So I love that. Thank you for sharing the voice on here. I know I put nah. you on the spot. No, nah, you're good. You're good. I like being put on the spot. It's fun. Good, good. So, yeah, Aaron fully did not know any of these questions that were going to be thrown his way because he likes being put on the spot. So full disclosure. Right? The man, the man. Yeah. I don't so, know anything. It's all improv. Exactly. 
So Aaron, what is the story of how Meet You came to be? What was going through your head? So it was about a year ago. I was driving home and it was right when the pandemic was starting, like things were completely shutting down. And I was seeing these groups on Facebook pop up that were like Zoom University Hello and Zoom University Chabad. And I was like, this looks cool. This looks fun. And then it's really funny. I hopped on one of the posts on Zoom University Hello, I think, or Chabad, one of them. And it was like, let's play the biggest game of Jewish geography ever. I'm like, okay, this sounds cool. So people are commenting and they're like, oh my God, we have like 50 mutual friends. We went to like camp together. Or, oh my God, like you were on my birthright trip. And, you know, you hooked up with the soldier and I wanted to, or something, you know, like stuff like that, whatever. So um, I just commented and this girl commented back or she messaged me actually or something. And she was like, we have one oh, mutual girl. friend. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. We have one mutual friend and I'm like, okay. Like I have one mutual friend with like hundreds of people on Facebook, but that's okay. Cool. Yeah. And then I was like, wait, maybe she, maybe is this is like a way to like DM someone if you're interested. Cause it's a bunch of Jews all together. Mm -hmm. And it's like a perfect excuse. If you like see someone that you like to DM them. Now, this girl wasn't, I don't know. That was just my brain thinking. But I was like, wait, there should be like a group for dating right now for like Jewish college students. If they're all these groups that are just to like socialize and hang out, why isn't there something for dating? Because everyone's going to be stuck inside, probably going to be on dating apps, but you can't even meet up with them because pandemic. So why not have like a group that's centered on dating, but it's like fun and interactive and you can like hang out. It's kind of community based and we'll match people. And like I made it. And then within a day, there was like over a thousand. And then within four days, there was like 6,000. And it just kept going from there. It's just like snowballed. And, and now how it's how many like are there now? So we have four groups on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're on TikTok. Um, we have a little over 60,000 combined on all platforms in a year. Now, yeah. thinking back, did you think it would ever become 60,000 people that you would find, essentially? Like, you would be that network. I mean, yeah. I know this might sound kind of stupid, and obviously it's not no, true, but, like, I don't even think there's, like, 60,000. To me, like, 60,000 Jews, like, around my age group, like, that doesn't even compute with me. Like, I'm like, what? Like, I, obviously there is. There's, like, you know, 6 million Jews in the U.S., and... 15 million worldwide, but like 60,000, like that's just a, a pretty significant slice of the Jewish community. When you take into context, like the numbers that we have, because it's not a lot. So 60,000, like it's blown my mind in just a year or two. Like I thought we'd have a, you know, a few thousand, maybe get to 10,000, but like 60,000, like. So your goal it, was like 10,000. I don't even know if I had a goal in mind. I just knew that it would like get decently big like i saw halal had like a few thousand and i'm like oh we could probably get like a few thousand like within a few weeks maybe ten thousand twenty thousand in a year i was just you know i was just i didn't have anything specific in mind but like sixty thousand i was like i if you, if i told myself that when i made it i would have been like holy bleep you know like wow like, what, did I, what did i do like in a good way so that's great. So why why do you think it was such a success? I think there was a like, need for it. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was just a need for it. I think there was a need not just for like, I mean, there's Jewish dating apps and websites, but there's nothing that's like community based because the Jewish com like Jewish, I'm using community over and over again, but the Jewish community is, it's very community based. Like if you've ever been involved in Jewish life, like, you know, you go to your synagogue, you go to Jewish camp, you go on birthright, like you have Jewish friends, all that, like, you know, you hang out with yeah. one another, you help each other out. So the fact that it's community based, like it, it already like goes in line with being Jewish. And then the fact that it's like, I tried to make it, and I'm trying to still make it as like fun and easygoing and inclusive and interactive and just like fun and not, there's not so much pressure. Cause like dating apps, people kind of go on them and they don't want to see 
people they know, they feel like a little embarrassed. And I'm like, no, like this is the age we live in. Like everyone's online anyway. So let's just have fun while we're doing it. Absolutely. And so obviously that was the success in itself. What other opportunities have come up that you would have never even thought of because of Meet You, because of what you yeah, started? Yeah, so here? that's a part that's been kind of wild. I mean, getting interviewed is kind of like mind blowing because I'm on here right now, but I've had quite a few interviews just about creating it, which I like never would have thought of. And then besides that, like we just partnered with some really awesome organizations, like partnered with a birthright affiliate to do like birthright trips. <laughs> and that's Partner- Taylor Made, right? Yeah. Tailor Made. So um, I'm working with them as well. And of course I, I find that we have so many different interactions with each yeah. other. So I think that's amazing. I want to thank you too, really quickly before you finish for yeah. Everything you've done for me, because I mean, we've both helped each other. I mean, me with word of mouth and meet you anytime I could possibly talk about it. If anything, that's yeah, like for the first sure. thing that comes out of my mouth. And then the second is, you know, you posting my TikToks. I had no idea going on to meet you Zooms that people would know who I was. Yeah. But partially, all of that is because of you. So I have you to thank for all of that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's that's crazy too, because like, the reason that I even found out about your TikToks was because I was, ha- I didn't ever go on TikTok before Meet You. I thought it was like this weird app where like, Dancing. I don't know, people dance and I'm like, why do I want, I don't want to, that's no thank you. Why like, you I don't even know, I don't, I don't even know if I'm like Gen Z, I'm 24, so I don't, I think I'm like in the middle of Gen You're Z millennials. So I'm like, so I'm like, why am I even on this like Gen Z app that I don't even know what they're saying half the time? 100%. But I had people sending me like TikToks of Meet You and I'm like, whoa, this is kind of funny and cool. So we made a Meet You TikTok to like post those. And then I saw you and all these other Jewish TikTokers. And I'm like, this is like really like, this is cool. So then, you know, we got in touch and I'm like, well, we're going to make a meet you TikTok and we'll just post members TikToks. And then like, it kind of took off from there. And then we, I connected with you and other uh, Jews on TikTok and yeah, it helped, it it helped us both out because we would like advertise Tell us us what meet you TikTok is so everyone can follow you. It's just at meet you, just M-E-E-T-J-E-W. Check it out. And we're just, we, we repost like people that will make TikToks about Meet You, just Jewish TikToks in general, just funny, like Jewish content, just like a hub for like, you know, the Jews to like congregate and post their funny Jewish TikToks. Love it. Love it. Okay. So, right. In, in Judaism, right. The Jewish mothers, they always have a secret sauce, always a secret ingredient. What would you say is the secret ingredient to Meet You? What differentiates it from all this J swipe and the hinge and whatever? what's your sauce i think it's authenticity honestly i just think it's like we you know people like go on there and they'll just like post outlandish stuff they'll post like very honest truthful vulnerable stuff like not just like oh my god like my stomach's bothering me because i'm jewish who else is is like me who where are my jews at with like the (laughs) upset stomachs it's like people are actually like talking about like their struggles with like mental health and the struggles they've had with dating. And like, there's a lot of brutal honesty, honest, that's been on the page, which I think has like created an environment where people feel like comfortable sharing. They feel like they could actually meet someone. And it's not like just this um, show off contest, like it is on other dating apps where you have to have like the perfect pictures and like the perfect bio. So I think that's a big part of it. And that's what I've really tried to push. I'm like, all right, this is for every Jew under the sun, because sometimes in the Jewish community, like we can keep to ourselves. So I just wanted to keep it open to like as many Jews from as different backgrounds as possible. And I think we've done a good job at that. So I'd say like authenticity and just like inclusion of everyone too has been like the secret sauce. And what does your Jewish mom think? I mean, she must be so proud of you, right? She's on it. My parents are both on it. I love <laughs> They're that. on me too. Cause like I made it and like, I don't know. I was just inviting when I first made it. I'm like, I'll invite all my friends. With us. I'll invite my parents. I'll invite my brother. So like they're on it still. And like, technically I guess that breaks the rules. Cause they're not of 
age, but like, whatever, we make an obsession because they're my parents. So like they comment on stuff and sometimes they'll be like, mom, why'd you comment that? What are you doing? And she's like, oh my God, sweetie, they're just, I don't know. It's hilarious. And they're so cute. And I'm just like, of course she has to hype you up. Are you joking? Right. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So yeah, that's been really funny to have my parents on there, but they love it. My mom loves it. She's super entertained by it she's always like she'll like know things that'll happen on there before i do because i'll be i don't know i'll be doing schoolwork or talking to a friend and she's like oh my god you need to see this post on meet you and i'm like mom just like let me chill for a minute (laughs) but yeah it's awesome i love that i love that and so what would you do differently if you had the chance because we're talking about all these successes right if you could go back and you knew everything that was going to happen, what would you change? That's a good question. Um, I would say like a couple of things. I would say number one, uh, not biting off more than I can chew because, excuse me, like I just have, or was saying yes to like every opportunity and every like person reaching out like for, to partner for this or for that. And like, I was like getting overwhelmed and I wasn't delegating well enough. And, you know, we were like growing faster than I even could keep up with. So I would just say like learning how to say no and how to scale properly just because it's gotten so big. And also I would say that just you need to take breaks from social media when you're on social media as a creator, as a I don't like the word, but I guess an influencer, I guess that's the the term that you use. I really don't like that term, but yeah, whatever. An influencer, a content creator, someone who has a business on social media, like, yes, you need to be on it because that's your gig, but you need to take a break because it can be pretty overwhelming and right. you kind of get is stuck in the like virtual reality, like beehive of you know, social media and all this. So it can be a little bit much. So I was just take breaks more, take time out for myself, you know, get out in the real world, get in nature. I love that you said that too, because I know you were very open, like with the group when you did take a break and you did like take a step back and, you know, normalizing that I think is really important when you have like such a place of leadership and authority in a group like that. Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, I was struggling with, um, opening up about that because i i had to take some time off just because i had some lingering health issues i had to focus on i'm still finishing up my degree in school so it's just kind of overwhelmed with everything and i needed to take a step back and i you know instead of like keeping it private and you know just holding it in i was like well i'll just let everyone know because people have shared their struggles on meet you so yeah. i think it would be good if i shared mine not only just as like a sign that like people in positions of leadership can have issues but that um i needed to do it for myself too i needed to like get it off my chest and it felt it's good to- it felt good yeah good no felt i was good. super proud of you. it was like my proud mom moment <laughs> no 100 percent. Um, my thought process into it just to finish off real quick was like, I don't, I almost don't care about the reaction. I know that sounds a little bit brutally honest. I just wanted to do it just to like, get it off as like, I'm doing this, you know, like hopefully people will respond positively. Maybe they won't, maybe I'll get some hate, but like another thing with social media is like, you kind of just need to put it out there sometimes if you feel that you should. And if you get a negative or positive reaction, then that's people's opinions and you really can't do anything about it at all. So absolutely. That's such a good way of looking at it. But on another note, right? I mean, yeah. what what are your expansion plans for the future? Because you have so much ahead of you. Of course, you're gonna deal with these challenges, what you would have changed. You obviously dealt with them really, really well. But so what what are the plans? What are the future goals? Yeah, so um just off the bat, we've been working on a website for quite some time. Some 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 time now. Uh, we can get it out, but we just wanted to make sure it looks really well, so we have a really good landing page for us. And then down the line, uh, like to develop an app. We've been looking into that, talking to people about 
making legitimate like meet you app. So that's in the works. Um, we're looking to get onto other platforms as well, like discord and Slack and um, clubhouse and things like that. Just expanding at the right time, not doing it all clubhouse, at once. I told you. That yeah, I know. So definitely getting onto those other platforms, but besides online, like we're looking forward to like being in person, like, having legitimate official like meet you meetups in person when whatever city um you know doing the birthright trips and then even a couple other like really cool projects that are kind of in the works that once it for so much so many friendships so many relationships some yeah. of my friends like i even met through you it's it's crazy so what can let me ask you a question what's been like your I don't know, the biggest surprise that has happened from you get, being on Meet You. This is so funny because I expected that that might have been something you would ask me. Yeah. Like, internally. Um, but for me, the biggest, the biggest surprise was going on a Zoom on like, I don't know, a Thursday night, seeing that somebody posted it. It was Vanessa was hosting Zooms and she was doing right. breakout rooms. Okay. I had no idea what I was doing. I was like, let me just go on it with like a few of my, my friends and I go on it and everyone starts freaking out. Cheryl Cohen, Cheryl Cohen. Oh my God. Oh my God. Cheryl Cohen's in the Zoom. Yeah. And the only reason that they would even know like that extent was because of you. So to me, it was like, wow, like, you know, everything I'm doing has correlated so much with Me Too and like everything we've talked about. And then those people became my friends. Like at first I was taken aback. And I didn't know how to respond because that hadn't really happened to me. It was still like the beginning of everything. This was like May and I started in March. So. Yeah, that's so crazy. wild. Right? That you get on a Zoom and they're like, oh my God, Cheryl Cohen. Like they're just freaking yeah. out. Like, they're like, no, please stay. Don't leave. And I was like, oh my God, this is so weird. Uh, isn't it? But, it's, such, it's the strange. Because like, isn't it surreal when like, I don't know, you're just posting stuff like on TikTok or on whatever platform yeah. and like you're in your house doing it and you're maybe with your family or friends, but like, you know, you like see the likes and interactions, but you're like, I don't, this doesn't even seem real, but then you get on something like zoom and then people are like, Oh my God, the meet you guy. Or, Oh my God, Cheryl Cohen. You're like, what? Like, what is this? <laughs> it's so, it's so strange, honestly. So I'm going to ask you the question you probably expected me to ask you the whole entire time. So you're the king of matching all these Jewish couples, right? You're, you're the mensch of the year, okay, if we were to crown that for you. Any lucky ladies up your alley? I mean, should we be looking forward to uh, Mrs. Rainey anytime soon? I mean, hello, we're getting older. <laughs> I've been asked that quite a few times. Um, I'm, right now I'm single, so, you know. <laughs> Helping other people out find their match, but you know, if I find mine, that'll okay, be cool. Okay, but gotta have been people sliding in the DMs of Aaron Ramey. Like, am I wrong? Yeah, yeah. There's been a few for sure. There's, 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 there's and been, just uh, not good there's been more than more than one. What? And they're just not good enough, right? I mean, no, no, not at all. Not, not a girl all. who's starting a Facebook group or a Jewish <laughs> group, maybe, maybe we could get that to work. No, no, no. I've talked to some really like awesome, nice girls throughout the process. And like, you look at the demographics on Facebook, it's like 60% Jewish girls on Meet You. And it's like 40% guys. It's like a crazy like distribution. It's like, whoa. So, yeah. so you have Meet you matches every week. How does it work? How did you figure that out? And so there's matches every week. How, how does that add up? And do you think people have actually dated from those specific matches or just oh, yeah. from like hundred percent? No, people have, I, I just got reached out to on Wednesday when I was doing a year anniversary post and this girl reached out and was like, Oh my God. Hey, I wanted to let you know, like another successful match. And I'm like, how'd you guys meet on the platform? Cause there's a bunch of different ways that people can meet. That's great. So what yeah. has been the most rewarding part of all of that? I mean, you have people reaching out to you, telling you that they're dating, that they've made friendships, right? Like what's the most rewarding part of everything? That's so wild. You asked that. Cause I was just talking about this with my friend last night. We were on the phone and he's like, dude, I saw that post you made about the couple getting married. He's like, he's like, 
do you even believe that? He's like, I'm like, no, it just is surreal. And like, that's the best part of it because there is a lot of, I don't want to say negativity, but there's a lot of like difficult stuff that comes with like starting a business with being on social media, with helping to match people with having something that's community based. So like, yeah, there's some stuff that can be a little bit stressful, like with anything, but when I look at the couples that we've made or they reach out to me, we have like a new one reach out. It's like the best thing ever because it's like this fun Facebook group that I started like a year ago has like literally it's given the people the chance to like get married to someone that they might've not met otherwise. That's what like, like, yeah, (laughs) no, I have a bunch of people help me out, but I want to shout them out too. But it's not just all me. I have a big team working uh, with me, but no, that's the craziest part. That's like, that's where I'm like, okay, this, this is, I like doing this a lot. That's really rewarding. I love that. The other element that I think is so genius is you have the perfect NJG and the perfect NJB. Now, what would you consider the perfect NJG and the perfect NJB? Is it, you know, the way they make their matzo balls? Is it, you know, the way they respect the Jewish mother? I mean, what qualifies? How do you pick them? That's such a good question. Oh, my God. I think, honestly, it's just like if you're being vulnerable or you're being very authentic, like that's always stands out. Like, that's the best when people are just like, I don't know, I'm just giving this a shot. We'll see if it works. I'm, you know, I'm a nurse and I love to, you know, bake a brisket. And, you know, they're just like telling all these funny little quirks about themselves. So I think that's like, those are the best qualities, you know? I I love it. You have to ask them, correct? You can't just ask them? Well, at first, (laughs) I guess, to be honest about something else, at first we would just like, post people because their bios were on there. So like, oh, they're single. And we also, I thought it was a nice surprise. Like, oh my God, open my notifications, find out I'm a nice Jewish boy of the week. But like, yeah, it's like a learning process. So we had a couple of people reach out and be like, hey, like I have found someone, my bio's still on there, unfortunately. Or like, oh no, I don't want to be it, but thank you. I appreciate it. So like now we asked and that's another like thing people that you learn saying, along oh, no, the way. I don't want to be it? What? Some people don't want, you know, they don't want that much because it's a lot of attention when you get posted like that. And then you get tons of DMs from people. So it is a little bit. I've gotten uh, some pretty weird DMs, Aaron, I will say. Yeah. But haven't we all, right? I mean. Yeah, that's that's been another interesting thing. What's the weirdest you were told about or the weirdest you received through Meet You? Wow. (laughs) Um, The weirdest I was told about. I don't know. There's been a lot of, (laughs) there's been a lot of weird DMs, honestly. Um, I mean, we've, yeah, I'm trying to think of like specific ones. I don't know. Just people like they've been like DM from, you know, fake accounts or fake profiles, or they've had like really, you know, the obvious one is just like really cringy pickup lines, I guess. That's always like something that I'm hearing about or like, how do I DM people and blah, blah, blah. So people ask in- you how people ask you how they should DM. Yeah. Them. Like, how should I DM someone? I'm like, <laughs> dude, everyone's different. Like, you know, like, just don't be creepy. Don't be weird. Like, just. And what do you do? What do you do, by the way? Like, reach out to you and they're like, someone so is being creepy. Like, do you delete them from the group? Do you give them a warning? How do you go about that? Yeah. Is so with that, that, like the policy that we have is that if it meets a certain criteria, like it's, you know, very like it's harassing or it's you know, it's crosses the line with, you know, something really bad, then we'll block the person. But if it's just kind of like, you know, it's a attempt at humor, you know, they kind of maybe said something a little bit funky, like we'll give them the benefit of the doubt when it starts getting harassing. It's like, all right, we've, we've blocked a lot of people for that. Cause we, we take that seriously, but you know, sometimes people just DM things kind of, you know, it's a joke or like they didn't mean it. And like, there's, there's understanding between all parties most of the time. So that's been something interesting to navigate to. And also there's a, there's a privacy line. It's like, what's private, what's, what's not. So with people that have crossed the line, we have to like remove them. We try to keep it as like private as possible because we're not trying to embarrass anyone. So. 
I like that, you know, got to got to keep the respect, got to keep, you know, what you're doing pure. Couple wise, if you had to guess a number, right? Like the jelly bean jar when you were a kid, how many couples yeah. do you think have occurred from me too? I mean, That's you get really, blamed from the breakup, you get blamed for the relationship, fine, but like how many relationships, breakup or not, do you think have occurred from me too? We can count the breakup ones too, because there's been <laughs> <laughs> there's been a couple actually like that just happens in dating you right like, people that? break up you hear about them i get reached out yeah being like oh my god thank you like i got into something but it didn't work out but i just want to thank you for even like having the platform to do it so breakup. what's up that's a respectful breakup for reaching yeah out. there was a couple of those which are good sometimes they're not so good i'll just overhear it and different from different people which is interesting but um God, with every with breakups too, like legitimate couples. Yeah, like if you have to guess a number, it's in it's in the do, it's in the dozens at this point because there's couples that have reached out that we haven't posted because they just want to keep their anonymity, and then we've posted like thirteen or fourteen. So it's it's upward it's upwards of like, and then all the people who didn't tell you, right? Yeah, so it's it's. It's at least, I'd say, like, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say, like, 50, I think. That's awesome. Just based off the ones we've posted, the ones that people have told me but want to remain anonymous, and then the ones where people have not even told me. Because people will be out of dating for, like, five months and will be like, oh, my God, I finally want to tell you. And I'm like, thank you. I appreciate that. That's amazing. Yeah, right, but could you tell me a little bit sooner? <laughs> Yeah. But no, it's, yeah, it's awesome. Okay. So, so obviously you're this icon, right? 50 couples. That's crazy in a year. Do you get recognized on the street? Like if you're going somewhere, are you like a a celebrity where you are? No, not at all. Not at all. Not at all. No one's ever approached you and been like, oh, you're Aaron (laughs) Ramey. No, not in person, not in real life. No, but like when I hop on one of these Zoom calls that are that people have on Meet You, then yeah, I'll, I'll hear that for sure. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely I'll 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 hear that. Like, and it's kind of it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. It's cool, but it's weird, you know. Because I'll jump. Now. Yeah, I'll jump on one of the Zooms and like they'll be like, "Is that is that Aaron? Is that the Meet You guy?" And I'm like, "Is that how I'm known now?" And then when I get on the Zooms, I'll get asked questions for like two hours. You know, yeah. And I'll just it'll be an interview, which is I I like it. It's fun, but it's like you know, you guys can do your thing, like, like just I'm, act like I'm I'm one of I'm just one of the fly on the wall. <laughs> yeah, I'm just I'm just part of the squad. You know, I'm just part of the crew. This one's probably the most important question I'll ever ask you in my entire life. What do you consider a good bagel? What do I consider a good bagel? <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, the follow that's up. The follow up. Before you answer, this yeah. part is the most important part. Okay, get okay. ready. I'm on the spot. Emotional. I have is to a start. bagel considered a sandwich, Aaron? This is this is essential friendship. Is a bagel considered a sandwich? Yes. I, and then what well, first, is a bagel? so it's two questions. What's considered a good bagel, and what is a bagel? Is yes. a bagel a sandwich? Okay. Yes. So for the first part. So, there was an article recently that said California is better than bagels in New Bro. York, which I was just like, what? Bro. First of all, I've grown up in California my entire life and the bagels here are like, eh, you know, and then like my, I haven't, I haven't even been to New York. Yeah. I still need to go. California. Their bagels suck. Thank you. Thank you. They're not that great, honestly. So a California, but like my brothers has visited New York and he'll like bring food back. And like, I've had their bagels and it's like the best thing I've ever put in my mouth. So like, I don't know where the hell that came from, but like, we can put that to bed as someone from California. But then also is a bagel a sandwich? God, that's like, is a hot dog a sandwich? It's not. I would say, I would say no, just because like, because like, I don't know, like a bagel is just a bagel. Thank you. Wait, hear out my logic. Ready? You know? Ready? This is the logic. When you're hungry and your friends want to get sandwiches, sandwiches. Yeah. Do you, do you get a bagel when your friends are like, No, dude, you, you were like, we're getting a bagel. 
No, you get big. You know what? You understand me. And I just knew, I knew I had to make sure, but now I officially know. No, for sure. Because like, dude, when you're, yeah, when you think of sandwich, you're like, all right, I'm going to get like a sub, like, you know, like with turkey in it or something. Yes. And they're like, well, you can put that in a bagel. And I'm like, but bruh, you're calling it a bagel. <laughs> Minutes before this, by the way, I posted a TikTok saying absolute PSA. If you think that a bagel, <laughs> you have got to go. Oh, I got like, facts. Find me in the comments and prove me wrong. And everyone, honestly, I, everyone I don't on think my that... team for Lost Tribe is like, no, Libby, it's a sandwich. And I'm like, no and then Even Cheryl the, out and like i get crazy oh my i God. was just gonna i was just gonna say like this sounds like something that like some of your non-jewish friends might be saying but yeah. this is tribe this is tribe bruh all right we got something to talk about this is tribe this is big pro this is very problematic as gen c says this is very problematic very very problematic and the fact that you're on my side just like i'm i'm like screaming inside like i'm so happy that you understand 100 no i feel you we gotta we got we gotta we gotta rectify this asap good well okay so my very very last question and every guest who is on the show will be forced to be asked this question you by the way our first ever guest such an accomplishment so dope you're gonna be the first person to answer this question how cheryl cohen is your jewish mother like on a scale of one to cheryl oh my god i that's such a good question Okay, if she had the New York, like Brooklyn-y accent that Cheryl Cheryl Cohen has, it would be probably like a nine five. But because you know she doesn't, she's from the Midwest, been in California for so long, I'd say probably about an eight point four. Mm. Eight point four. She's up there. She's like Jewish mother AF, but like just the accent makes it go down just a little bit, just a little. I love that. Yeah. Well, Aaron, thank you so, so much for your time. You are amazing. For everyone who doesn't already follow Aaron, why don't you tell them all of your socials that they can find you on and meet you so people can connect? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you want to follow Meet You on Facebook, just type in Meet You and there'll be four Facebook groups all in accordance with age, except one is just for socializing, not for dating. Um, so join whichever one corresponds to your age. And then you can add me on Instagram at Aaron Ramey, just my name, A-A-R-O-N-R-A-I-M-I. -I. Uh, follow us on TikTok at Meet You. And then follow us on Instagram as well at Meet You You. At meet You and then just You. Love it. And oh, Aaron, the letter. Yeah. Do you have anything you want to share before we head off? Just that, like, if you're Jewish, come join Meet You. Like, it really doesn't matter your background. Like, we really are for all Jews. Like, we've matched, like, you know, Ashkenazi Jews, Israeli Jews, Sephardi Jews, Orthodox Jews, secular Jews, LGBTQ Jews, like every Jew you can think of, like we've helped set up and like we try to be as open as a space as possible for everyone because that's what we're all about. So if you want to join, join us and thank you for having me. I think that's about it. Yeah, well, thanks for being here, Aaron. So congratulations, though. I forgot to say that. Mazel tov on the, the show. This is amazing. Thank you. And congrats to you being the first episode. That, that's got to be pretty cool. For one year Love for it. both of us, starting TikTok, you for me too, me for the show now. It's so monumental. I know. Now we're like best friends. We've <laughs> never even met in real life, which is crazy. Stay tuned for Libby and Aaron's Hangout. Jewish mom approved. Welcome to Ask Cheryl. This is a new segment where you can ask me anything through the DMs, all the above, through Lost Tribe, through Libby. So, get ready for this one. Jason Silverstein from Williamsville, ah, Williamsville, New York, asks, my mother keeps bothering me to get married. First of all, not really a question, Jason Silverstein. Second of all, if your mother's Jewish, of course she's going to bother you. This is absolute instinct. You know, the least you could do after your mother pulled you out is have another child. Allie Fine Gold from Manhattan is asking for my matzo ball soup recipe. 
Sally, if I told you, I'd have to kill you. And the last one for today, Chad Smith from Macon, Georgia. I'm meeting my girlfriend's Jewish mother for the first time. What should I do? What should I wear? What should I say? What should I bring? Oh my God, would you relax already? It is not so big of a deal. It's only like your whole life or something, you know, is going to be in jeopardy. I understand. Anyways, Chad Smith, first of all, very happy you have a girlfriend. Very happy she has a Jewish mother. Now, you're going to go in. You're going to go. You're going to be respectful. You're never going to show up empty-handed. You're going to ask if you could help. I want you showing up with flowers, with dessert, you know. Be the Jewish boy you could possibly be. If you're a doctor or a lawyer, you know, name drop every few seconds. And, you know, wear something nice. Wear something, you know, you wouldn't be embarrassed in that your mother would want you to wear. Um... Bringing, I'm very happy you know you thought in your head that you had to bring something. So already brownie points for you. We all should learn from Chad Smith. And that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for sticking through the whole show, especially since this is the first show. And thanks to Aaron for being here. I just want to say, if you want to DM your mom rants, feel free to DM at Libby Amber Walker on Instagram. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I came in like a monster ball. I never felt so hard before. All I wanted was to get the recipe. Now go call your mother. She's worried about you.